All right, hey, AP Chemists, this is going to be the important information part 2-3. This will be periodic table and isotopes of elements. So here we are. Here is a periodic table. We'll talk more about periodic organization probably later in the year, um, but we're going to specifically talk about each element and the subatomic particles mentioned in a previous lecture. So it's important to know that on the periodic table, the elements as is, so elements on periodic table, PT, are neutral. So if I'm talking about, uh, oh, I don't know, MN, which is manganese, manganese has 25 protons and then therefore 25 electrons. If I'm just pulling out an element from the periodic table, same thing for helium. Helium has two protons and two electrons, done. And we know from a previous lecture that the number of protons are gonna be equal to electrons if they're neutral. For AP chemistry, this is kind of one of the first times where I say this, for AP chem, you need to remember the names from symbols. You'll see later on that this is what your periodic table looks like for AP chemistry. I'm sorry, it's sideways. But you'll see that you only have the symbol, the atomic number, and what's known as the average atomic mass. But we'll talk about that later. So you're going to have to get familiar with remembering elements and their names from symbols. You're also going to have to be able to identify subatomic particles. So let's start by thinking about protons and electrons again. All right, so here's a couple of guided examples here. Which element contains 50 protons? Well, on the periodic table, that number that's on the top here, this atomic number is the number of protons. So all of these numbers on top here, 1, 3, 4, 12 that I have here, those are the number of protons. So beryllium has four protons. Like I said, manganese has 25. If I'm looking for 50, 50 protons is right here. This is tin, S-N. So I would say tin, S-N, done. Second guided question, it says, how many protons does mercury have? Well, I have to find mercury. Mercury is a fun little interesting element where its name doesn't match its symbol. Mercury is HG. It's right here. And as you can see, its atomic number is 80. So it means its protons are 80. And then it says, how many electrons would it have? Also 80 in order for it to be neutral. And then finally, this last one says, what element is AU? So I have to find AU on the periodic table. And so I'm looking, I'm looking for the symbol, I'm looking for AU, oh, and I found it. It's actually right next to mercury, nice. And so AU is gold, and so the way that I remember AU is gold is AU, get back here with my gold watch, it's like a nice little easy way to remember gold. AU is gold, and how many protons does it have? It has 50 protons, I'm oh, sorry, 79 protons, I apologize. The atomic number is 79, so just 79 protons. So that is how we do protons and electrons. Protons are going to be equal to electrons for the elements being neutral. So if I had asked, it would have 17 protons and 17 electrons for gold. If I had asked for tin, it would have 50 protons and 50 electrons. Neutrons are a different game. So let's talk about isotopes and how I would calculate and identify neutrons now. So all atoms of a given neutral element have the same number of protons and electrons. Cool. Check. We got that. However, they do not necessarily have the same number of protons. They do not. Atoms with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons are called isotopes. So I could have two elements that are the same thing. They just have a different number of neutrons. They are called isotopes. So for example, a sample of neon will have 10 neutrons, 11 neutrons, and 12 neutrons. They're all still neon, which means neon over here has 10 protons. They all have 10 protons. And maybe they all have 10 electrons. 
But some will have 10 neutrons, some will have 11 neutrons, some will have 12 neutrons. And not only is this going to affect their subatomic structure, it's going to affect their mass number. So, for the sum of the number of neutrons and protons in a single atom, that's known as its mass number in a single atom. So, this A is something called mass number. We've already saw Z is atomic number. An atomic number is the number of protons. Now we have mass number, which I'm going to highlight here, is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So electrons are relatively massless, and so they do not contribute significantly to the mass of an element. So it doesn't matter if I gain or lose 50 or 30 electrons, its mass is going to be protons and neutrons. So for example, if, and I'm going to do this on the next page here, let's look at neon with 10 protons and three different isotopes mentioned. 10 neutrons, 11 neutrons, and 12 neutrons. I'm going to split this up. Look at this first one here. This is our first look at an isotope symbol. And here is it all broken down right here. Recognize isotope symbols. An isotope symbol typically has the chemical symbol right here. I'm going to highlight that. Element symbol. In the top left-hand corner, we have the mass number. And then in the bottom left-hand corner will have the atomic number, and that is a chemical symbol. We could also use an, um, another isotope notation in which we just have the symbol or name, and then we write the mass number next to it. So it would be symbol or name, and then we just write the mass number next to it. And so I'm going to write that, do that in blue, kind of color coding here. And so let's do that up here. So here's my first isotope symbol here. I have neon with a mass number of 20. And this is the atomic number, 10 protons, which is the atomic number. If I were to do the math, and I want to figure out how many neutrons it has, up here, mass is number of protons plus number of neutrons. Well, mass. Mass minus protons is equal to the number of neutrons. Just a rearrangement. So 20 minus 10. This is the one that has 10 neutrons. This symbol, if I do the other notation, would be neon 20, right? Look, my color coding here. I did it in blue, but again, my color coding has either the mass number in the top left-hand corner, or I would write the name or symbol and write the mass number next to it. Let's do another one. What if I gave you this one? 2110 neon. This would be named neon 21. Well, if I were to do the math, 21 mass minus 10 protons, this is the one that has 11 neutrons. Still neon, still has 10 protons, but now it has 11 neutrons, and it has a different mass. So different mass, different number of neutrons. And then finally, you'll see where I'm going with the last one. I'll do 2210 neon. This will be neon 22, and you could probably figure out that this has 12 neutrons. These are three different isotopes of neon. They're all neon. I'll highlight that in yellow. They're all neon. They're still the same element. Oops which means they all have the oops <laughs> they all have the same number of protons that 10 there the only thing that's different is their mass number and I'll still highlight that in blue the mass number is different and their mass number is different because they have a different number of neutrons as we see here and so we could summarize all of this into a beautiful table here so Again, number of protons would be 10. The symbol would be neon, which is NE, for all of them. Then the number of neutrons, well, protons plus neutrons gives me the mass. I'm working backwards here. 10 plus 10, the mass number is 20. 10 plus 11, mass number is 21. 10 plus 12, mass number is 22. And I'll put that in the top left, 20, 21, 22 and they all have 10 protons. So I'm just kind of summarizing this in a table. 
We will see in our next lecture that these isotopes don't all occur 100%. The most abundant isotope looks like it's the one that has a mass of 20, but this we'll talk about later. Later, later, later. Some quick guided questions before we move on to your exercises. So it says an argon isotope has a mass number of 40. How many neutrons does it have? Well, this is a lot of information that I need. Argon, AR. If I look on the periodic table here, argon has 18 protons. There are 18 protons. Its mass number is 40. 40 minus 18 must mean I have 22 neutrons. Remember, mass minus atomic number. And where am I getting that atomic number? Well, it's from the periodic table. The element symbol on the periodic table has an atomic number. That atomic number equals the protons. All right, what are the atomic number, mass number, and the symbol of the chlorine isotope with 18 neutrons? Well, I'm going to look for chlorine, Cl. Cl, right there, has an atomic number of 17. So in the bottom, it's going to be 17. It has 18 neutrons. So 18 neutrons plus 17 protons equals 35. Its mass will be 35. Boom, I am done. That is the isotope symbol for chlorine. And then finally, how many protons, electrons, and neutrons are present in an atom of 5224 chromium, also known as chromium 52? Well, I already know that it has 24 protons because the number on the bottom here is the atomic number. It must also have 24 electrons, because it's neutral. <coughs> Excuse me. If I want to figure out how many neutrons, neutrons is going to be 52 minus 24, because it's mass minus the number of protons. So if I do 52 minus 24, I get 28. That means I have 28 neutrons. Done. 28 neutrons, done. So, I have guided you on figuring out how to do protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, I'd like you to go forth and try practice exercises four and five here with doing isotopes of elements using the periodic table. Any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out.